CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Ayuk are both entering their final year of their rookie deal. CD was the 17th overall pick, Ayuk the 25th overall. It sounds like Ayuk's reps have had far more negotiations with the 49ers than CDs have had with the Cowboys. Ayuk has demanded a trade, yet ESPN reported that while other teams have inquired about trading for him, the 49ers have no interested in, in, interest in trading Ayuk. Then yesterday, Ayuk reported to camp, while CD apparently will not. 49ers GM John Lynch said, we fully intend on Brandon being a 49er moving forward. So Keyshawn, do you like or have a problem with Ayuk reporting to camp? What's the end game? Right? What, what, what's the ultimate end game? Is the ultimate end game to get paid or get traded? Because there's two different things here. Right? You got to look at if you go in the camp and you report and you, the general manager, owner, you guys have an understanding. We're going to, we, we need you here. You don't have to practice and we're going to try to work on the deal. Right. If, that, if that's a conversation, then okay. All right. That's fine. If that's, if that's the conversation. It has to be the conversation for me to even go in. Because if you tell them, having been here in this situation as IU and C.D. Lamb in my career, mm -hmm. if, if you tell somebody I want to be traded, I'm barking and I'm, I'm, I'm barking loud, mm -hmm. and I ain't going to bite, but no I'm barking. Bite. No bite. They already know. Yeah. Oh, you just talking. Agree. They already know yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. So they... Their cards is held close to their vest. Why would you all of a sudden use your Trump card? Why would you use it? What for? So he did that. He, he, he barked loud, but he didn't bite. Biting is holding firm and saying, okay, do whatever y'all want to do. It's all good with me. We'll just deal with it how we deal with it. That's not the case with Brandon IU. So what's his end game? Is his end game to be a 49er or to get paid? If he wants to get paid, stand firm and make them trade you. I've been through the situation. In 2000, when I got traded from the New York Jets to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, simple phone call from my agent to Coach Parcells at the time, who was the president of the team. Mm. My agent told Bill, he said, look, you know Keyshawn, and you know him very well. He will sit out. He will come in with X amount of games remaining. He will get his accredited season to our free agency, and you will eventually wind up getting nothing or moving him and you're going to have a mad player. You know what Bill said? Bill said, okay, tell you what. We don't want to pay him what he's asking for, but we certainly will move him. And he moved me. How old were you at that point? I was younger. I was probably his age. I don't remember. I was yeah. young. I was, in my, I was going into my fifth year in the fifth league. Year. Okay. I was coming out of my fourth year in the all league, right. had gone to Pro Bowls, mm -hmm. taking the team to championship, all, all of those sort of things. But in the end, he knew enough about me to know, eh, we don't want to, this kid here, he'll have us all <laughs> pulling out our hair because when he barks, he's going to bite. He's not going to say he's holding out. Plus, I didn't do it publicly. We did it quietly behind closed doors mm. and said, hey, we want to get traded because you don't want to set a precedent. So then payment. what was the timeline from there on? It might have took a, it might have been a, a month, month and a half. You know, it was Baltimore, it was Green Bay, it was... Tampa Bay, and at the end of the day, I didn't want to go to Baltimore. I, did, I know it sounds crazy. I didn't want to go to Green Bay and play with Brett Favre. I get it. I just didn't want to be in Green Bay. Okay. And, and the Bucks came on board because they had just gone to the NFC Championship game and lost to the Rams, and they needed a receiver, and they was willing to give the Jets what they wanted and willing to give me what I wanted. So I just stayed quiet and let my agent get the deal done. I wasn't coming to OTAs. I wasn't going to off-season condition. I wasn't doing none of that. And they did it right before the draft, which... Okay. That's how you get it done. Yeah. Because once you bark and you don't bite, trade me, trade me, trade me, trade me, you done use it up already. Now you can't even, how many times you gonna scream, trade me? And you went in. So you can't go in and you then leave. Out. No. Mm -mm. So, you know, but what's his end game? The fact that he's there, and I agree with you, I don't think he's gonna actually get on the practice field until he has a deal, but the fact that he's there, tells me that he must think they're pretty close, right? Because to your point, I don't think he goes to training camp and gives up that card if he doesn't feel they're just a couple days away from announcing a deal. Now, I don't know if they are. And we saw last year the 49ers go right up until a few days before the first regular season game 
to get Nick Bosa signed. So possible that they learned from that and they won't do that again. Possible they'll say, hey, we're willing to do it and, and test us too. The thing about Ayuk is he doesn't have a lot of leverage to be traded. He can play out this season on his 14 million and then they can franchise him again after that. So he doesn't have a lot of leverage, even no matter how many times he barks. The only thing he could really do to force a trade is to be so destructive, James Harden and Houston level destructive yep. to the team that he's just too much of a distraction, too much of a story, and they've got to deal him. He's clearly not interested in that because, again, he came into camp and he's at least physically going to be there. Now, while he doesn't have a lot of leverage to be traded, just unless he really blows up the fence there, he does have a lot of leverage to get paid. Because here's the deal. When Parcells dealt you, you guys were not the Super Bowl favorite. The 49ers, if you check with Vegas, are the Super Bowl favorite. And their time to win is now. And they cannot start making changes to any of the things around the edges of their winning formula. They need him on the field. He's their best vertical threat. He is their best blocking receiver. He's great at those yak yards, the yards after catch, which really they depend on as a team more than some other teams do. So he is a vital part of this campaign they're going to run this season. So I don't think he can make the call and say, uh, trade me or everything, else. Everything you just said, Rachel, about his ability on the field to help the team, that's his leverage. Yes, that's he what I'm saying. He used that by, not, by coming in. That's Should've the leverage to get in. paid. But as you said, it's two different things, right? Is it the leverage to stay with the team under a better deal, or is it that he wants... To... I don't think he truly wants to get dealt, and I think we're seeing that because of him coming into camp. And I don't think he has leverage to get dealt because they, in essence, have two more seasons they can keep him there. However, I think he has leverage to demand a bigger deal and to just sit out and stay there because of what he does on the field for them and how close they are to winning. Mm -hmm. And they know yeah. if they mess this up, if they do deal him away, they're going to be that much further back from the past. And here's what I'm going to say before I hand it to you, Skip. I know for a fact I'm 100% correct every single time I say this. When an athlete tells a team that they don't want to be there, they move them. The problem is when you go in, at that point, is, but think about it. You talk about James Harden, regardless of how James got moved, mm -hmm. regardless of what he did and burned down the building, regardless, when you tell a team, I don't want to play for you, I want to be traded, they will eventually move your ass. Kobe Bryant went on the radio yeah, but that here. But that's that was real. He went that's on the radio so here in L.A. Though. and asked for a trade. That's so different. You're dealing with Dr. Buss. It's just different. Just, the Lakers situation is way... I knew you was going to say Kobe. That's just different. That's a different situation. The man went on the radio. It's different, though. Rachel was Kobe. He just he, He's hot-headed right now. Just calm down. It's Dr. Buss. Just chill. Okay. So, when you were in your situations, there was no such thing as social media. No. So, Brandon Ayuk has been all over social media with a lot of barking. Yeah. And a lot of huffing and puffing, and I'm going to blow your house down, 49ers. And they're like, no, because it came off to me as a little immature and empty threats. And Jerry Jones has a favorite phrase, your tolerance for ambiguity, meaning what's your risk-reward tolerance? What, like when, when, you, when you had your rep call Bill Parcells, you, you, you're ready to, to go, man. Like, oh, Bill like, there, there was no, there, there was no threatening just because deep down you want to build to tell you how much he loved you and that there's no way he's going to move you. And no, you, you were done, done, and you made that clear through your representative to a, a coach who really knew what you're made of. And he's like, okay, we're out. Mm -hmm. We will figure this out. It has been clear to me that Brandon Ayuk wants to be a 49er. Mm -hmm. He loves playing there. He lives for it, and it, it's, it feels right to him. And so he's doing all this blustering over here and all this social media. And John Lynch is just saying, wake me up when it's time to, to do this deal. Because they will get this done at some point, I think, probably sooner than CD's deal, because I'm with you. I think they're probably pretty close. They got to be. And yeah. when, when he walks in the door of training camp, it's over. Your tolerance for ambiguity is done. You, you are say, you're telling them... Let's just get this done. And you can't tell me that it didn't resonate in the very back of Brandon Ayuk's mind. With the 31st overall pick in the last draft, they took Ricky Pearsall out of Florida, 
And I watched Florida three or four times, and he never caught my eye, eye where I said, oh, wow, I, I see a flash. But he ran 4-4, four, four, and now he's got a hamstring issue. I was going to say, he's now out. he's not okay. playing. I think that okay. works in but, Ike's favor. But, but still, it's not like he's out for the year. Yeah. So uh, the, the, they said, they sent a little message of, well, we've we got, we got another young guy, and maybe we, our offense is so good because.